What do we know about ancient seafaring? That's the question that often comes up when new evidence for long-distance sea travel during prehistory is found. For example, two papers I discussed in recent videos raised questions about boat technology and navigation techniques during both the Mesolithic and the Neolithic in the Mediterranean. In 1989, a submerged Neolithic settlement was found in a lake north of Rome, and due to its conditions buried under sediment and water, it was relatively well preserved. Five canoes were excavated from the site, which may well have been used for both seafaring as well as more localised travel on the lake and nearby rivers. Such well-preserved evidence for the Neolithic is a vital clue as to how the ancients may have traversed the Mediterranean, both then and in earlier times. In this video, I'm going to discuss the intriguing underwater village of La Marmotta and its boats. The earliest boats to have been found in Europe are dugout canoes dating to the Mesolithic. This means they were made from tree trunks. Some of the best examples were found at Peche in the Netherlands, Noven sur Seine in France, Dumelohausen in Germany, Listrup in Denmark and Hotzia in Slovenia. These vary in size and in the type of tree trunk used to make them. Some have evidence for combustion which shows that they were burned as part of the process to hollow them out. Ores providing indirect evidence for boating have also been found at Mesolithic sites in Denmark. Dugout canoes continued to be used into the Neolithic, but the only ones discovered from that time period in the Mediterranean basin are those from La Marmotta. La Marmotta is a submerged Neolithic village dating to 5700 BCE that was discovered in 1989 at Lake Bracciano, north of Rome. Excavations there have revealed incredibly well-preserved textiles, basketry, cordage, pottery, wooden utensils, flint tools and five boats. Due to the rising water level of the lake, the settlement was found buried under 3 metres of sediment and 8 metres of water and is around 300 metres from the modern lakeshore. During the Neolithic, the village would have been on the shoreline. Lake Bracciano is connected to the Mediterranean Sea by the River Arone over a distance of 34 kilometres. Its houses were pile dwellings, which means they were built on posts. 3,400 wooden piles were recovered during excavations. Up until the discovery of La Marmotta, Neolithic pile dwellings were only known from the Alpine region. The walls of the houses had been made of wattle and daub. Archaeologists identified 14 of these rectangular dwellings with internal walls and a central hearth. The five canoes were associated with these houses. La Marmotta's faunal assemblage was mostly domestic livestock with a range of wild animals making up a small percentage. Around 65% of the botanical remains belonged to domestic cereals. Fungi was also collected by its Neolithic inhabitants and it's thought this was either to light fires or for medicinal purposes. The settlement probably covered a wider area than that which has been excavated, so more boats could be waiting to be found. Let's run through a description of the canoes that were excavated from La Marmotta and then I'll talk about some seafaring experimental archaeology that has been carried out with replicas. Canoe 1 was found next to structure 6 and is made from a hollowed out oak trunk and measures 10.43 meters in length. It's 0.85 meters wide at the bow and 1.15 meters at the stern. On its base there are four transversal reinforced with a trapezoidal shape that would have made the hull more durable and made it easier to handle. Interestingly, three T-shaped hold objects were found inserted into its starboard side. These have two, three and four holes carved into each of them respectively and are spaced at similar distances from each other and at the same height. The researchers think they may have been used to fasten ropes tied to a sail or to a stabilizer or to join the canoe to another one, making a catamaran. Any of these modifications would have made the canoe more stable and increased its capacity to transport people, animals and goods. 
Obviously, a canoe with a length of 10 meters is quite over the top for lake and river travel, so it may have gone quite a bit further, but more on that later. Canoe 2 was found near Structure 5, fastened to the ground with two sticks inserted into its starboard and port sides. It is made of an alder trunk and measures 5.4 meters in length and is 0.4 meters wide at the stern and 0.36 meters at the bow, so about half the size of Canoe 1. Since it's fairly small and as a result of its shape, the authors of the paper think it was a fishing boat or that it was used to gather plants and carry people and small animals. As well as being used on the lake, it was potentially even used on the sea. A 13.4 centimetre long mushroom shaped piece of wood with a single hole in it was found with this canoe. This may have been a bollard used to secure the canoe when the water level of the lake rose. Canoe 3 was found near Structure 12, fixed to the ground with three sticks, and is also made from an alder trunk. It's 8.35 metres long, 58 centimetres wide at the stern, and 50 centimetres at the bow. Just as in Canoe 1, it has transversal reinforcements at its base. It's fractured around four meters from the stern, breaking it in two. This probably occurred as a result of natural actions after the site was abandoned. Canoe 4 was found next to Structure 3 and in a much more fragmentary state. It's also fractured four meters from the stern. Canoe 4 is made from poplar trunk and its overall size cannot be discerned due to its bad state of preservation. A large wooden board was found on its port side and may once have belonged to it. Canoe 5 was found near Structure 13 and is made from a beech trunk. It measures 9.5 metres in length and 60 centimetres in width at the stern. However, it's also in a fragmentary state so its original size isn't known with any certainty. There are two transversal reinforcements at its base. Several other objects were excavated from La Marmotta that may have played a role in water navigation, either as oars or rudders. Analyses of the canoes found that they had been carved with polished adzes and axes. Evidence of burning to aid the hollowing out process was also found in canoes 1 and 4. Since the stone adzes excavated from La Marmotta vary in their morphometrics, it's thought that different types were produced for different specialised activities. Activities. Perhaps a certain category was used just for canoe making. Lake Bracciano is currently 9.3 kilometers in diameter and was slightly smaller during the Neolithic. Since one of the canoes is over 10 meters in length and several others likely were that long originally as well, a boat of such a large size wouldn't have been necessary just to traverse the lake. So it's possible that the canoes were used to travel the 38 kilometers along the River Arone to the Mediterranean Sea and then to other locations around the basin from there. The shape of some of the pottery found at La Marmotta is similar to Greek and Balkan vessels and the obsidian used to make tools there came from the islands of Lipari and Palmarola. So there is indirect evidence that the inhabitants of La Marmotta must have traveled around the Mediterranean. In 1998, a team tested the seaworthiness of Canoe 1 by building a replica of it and managed to travel 800 kilometers from Italy to Portugal. A later similar project found that with 10 rowers and a coxswain, they could get the canoe up to an average speed of 50 kilometers per day. So it's quite plausible that the ancient inhabitants of La Marmotta traveled around the Mediterranean almost 7,000 years ago and may have even covered some pretty sizable distances in their cleverly modified dugout canoes rather than just taking short trips with visible land always in sight. They probably had specialists in seafaring within their group who planned and manufactured the canoes. A similar canoe may have been used 1,000 years earlier when a group travelled 100 kilometres from Sicily to Malta. I recently discussed the remarkable discovery of a Mesolithic site there, which pushed the date of human habitation back by 1,000 years. This is the longest distance known to have been covered by sea in the Mediterranean at that time. Later on, at roughly the same time as La Marmotta was inhabited, similar canoes, although none have survived, must have been used to reach Malta and establish the first Neolithic settlements there. As it's been pointed out in various papers, travelling from Malta to Sicily isn't too difficult because of 
highly visible landmarks such as Mount Etna, but the reverse journey is more challenging. So understanding the navigation techniques used in the Mesolithic and the Neolithic, as well as the boat technology available, would be helpful in understanding the role the Mediterranean Sea played in ancient people's lives. That's it. Let me know what you think about ancient Mediterranean seafaring in the comments. A big thank you goes out to my patrons and channel members, and I'll see you next time.